This is the day the Lord has made. Indeed, with joy and gladness, we come to hear God's word and receive from him the blessings as he comes to us in word and sacrament this morning. You may notice this morning today is the celebration of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, Elder Mel Sunday, so they will be helping lead us as part of the service. And as part of their uh, uh, service for us today, we're going to add something we haven't had since um, February, I believe. We're going to have a children's sermon today. Um, and so we haven't had one forever. Um, Pastor, you're welcome to come up and sit here with the rest of the kids. Wait your turn. We'll tell you when. Uh, so we're going to bring that back, and hopefully we can do that with social distancing the right way. Let's take a moment and share the peace of Christ with those around us. Good morning. God's peace. You get to worship all by yourself, don't you? I know. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. You still have to get used to, like, no hair. <laughs> good morning, sir. How you doing? Good morning. Lips to sing thy 
glory comes thy mercy to proclaim. <coughs> Most in holy name, alleluia, alleluia. May the light with Thou dost send, fill our songs with alleluias, alleluias without end. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God is our refuge and strength. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Lord of hosts, Hear our confession of sins and grant us your mercy and forgiveness. We have not trusted in your promised protection and strength, but have looked elsewhere for help and refuge. You alone have provided the remedy for that which truly causes our separation, troubles, and death. For the sake of Christ, your Son, our Redeemer, Grant us forgiveness and deliverance from all that would keep us from your present help. We ask it in the name of Jesus. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Because that river of grace and power has flowed over us in our baptism into death and resurrection of Jesus, in spite of our fear, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. By grace, God has granted each of us and everything that exists, and in the person of his Son entered into history and paid for every sin and sin itself. In Christ's resurrection, God promises have been made sure. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of Jacob is our fortress. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, always present in trouble, silence our fears when your good creation seems out of control and evil appears to run rampant. Like the dawn of a new day, Dispel the darkness of our hearts and renew confident faith in your constant presence and gracious protection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his div divine forbearance, he had passed o over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin, and the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Maybe see that. This time we invite the children to come forward. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Hey, do you guys like to eat apples or oranges? Yes, maybe. Apples, but not oranges. Okay, that's fine. Well, when you're hungry for an apple, do you just walk outside and say, hey, God, give me an apple, and it falls out of the sky? No, not usually. Well, apples usually grow maybe, maybe here in Iowa, and oranges grow in Florida, but how do you think that tree with the apples and oranges came from got to Florida? How do you think it got there? Someone sent it. Someone sent it, yeah. That tree was planted. Somebody had to plant the seed in the ground, and then that person watered the tree, nurtured it, making sure it had everything it needed to grow strong, and then eventually it began to grow fruit right? Okay. Well, did you know that God has chosen each of you to produce fruit too? The kind of fruit that he wants you to produce is a special kind of fruit called kingdom fruit. In fact, each of us are a piece of kingdom fruit. When we were baptized, God planted a seed in each of us. And that seed um, grew into um, when we read the word from the Bible, right? And then all of us continue to grow and are nurtured by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit helps us to learn to be kingdom fruit, God's people, right? So we ask for forgiveness whenever we sin, and we do the good works that God gives us to do, and then we tell others about Jesus. And when we do this, more kingdom fruit is produced as we spread the good news of Jesus. And God plants seeds of faith into others. And then those people tell others about Jesus. And they read the, the word and they get baptized and, and so on and so forth. So we all just continue to spread the word of Jesus. And God's kingdom fruit is produced over and over. And in this important process, by living your faith for Jesus and telling him about others, you are a special worker in the production of kingdom fruit. Now, in today's worship service, we're also talking about speci other special workers in God's kingdom. And these are members of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. This is a special group of women 
that does kingdom work in our church and community and all over the world throughout through sharing Jesus to others. So, like, for example, here in our church, every year, our Dorcas group, we assemble school kits for Lutheran World Relief. I think we have a picture of a school kit. These kits go to children all across the world, maybe. <laughs> and um, there's those kits are full of, like, pencils and crayons and notebooks, and they go to kids across the world who don't have those things. Um, then we also do things like make cards for shut-ins and deliver flowers to shut-ins and lots of different missionary projects. And we support, we do these, we support these countries. Oh, there's our school kit. Um, we do this by um, using our mites. We put pennies and nickels and dimes in these little boxes. And then these uh, mites go to bigger organizations that, that help um, like with, with world relief, like with the or the um, orphan grain train and different uh, ministries around the world. And we share the gospel of Jesus that way. Um, so I'm going to give each of you one of these little boxes, and you can take it home and put in your pennies and nickels, and then you can bring it back to the church, and um, that special money will go to these missions. Okay? So let's pray first. Okay. Let's pray and give thanks to God. Dear Lord, Thank you for making me a child of your kingdom in, baptize, in baptism. Help me to be a kingdom worker as I live my life for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. The old satanic foe Sworn to work us woe with craft and dreadful might, he arms himself to fight. <coughs> no strength of ours can match his strength. But now a champion comes to fight, whom God himself elected. We ask who this may be. The Lord of hosts is he, Christ Jesus, mighty Lord. God's only Son adored. He holds the victorious. Though hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us, we tremble not unmoved we stand they cannot overpower us let this world's tyrant rage
is ours forever. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. The text for our meditation as we continue our series is taken from Matthew chapter 10. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is my disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Dear friends in Christ. Last week we were celebrated and honored to receive into membership five new members of our congregation. They joined us as a part of the family of Emmanuel, and it's, it's a great time as we have that reception of new members. And if you remember, if you were here last week, and maybe you've been to other ones, we bring those individuals forward, and I asked them a series of questions in this rite of reception of new members. It's the same kinds of questions that many of us were asked when we were 14 or 15 at our confirmation. It's those questions that are important and that are part of who we are, our identity as Lutherans. But I wonder sometimes if asking these questions were not simply kind of going through a rote response. When I ask the questions, the answer is always yes with the help of God. And, and I wonder how much or how serious we take the answers to those kinds of questions. In the rite of confirmation, we are confessing not just a generic Christian faith, I believe in Jesus. In the rite of confirmation, in the reception of new members, we are confessing the faith as taught in the Lutheran small catechism as being true and accurate and correct. And that this faith is important that we take it seriously. In fact, not only are we asking people to confess their faith like all of us have, but we also attach several vows that you are pledging at that time. You may remember these vows. Do you intend to live according to the word of God in faith, word, and deed? To remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Now listen, even to death? That's a promise and a pledge that all compromands have made. And this one, do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession? In other words, in the confession as taught in Luther's small catechism and the Lutheran church, do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession to suffer all, including death, rather than fall away from it? These are serious questions and should not be taken lightly. Now, it's an important thing, and I think those who are adults, when we make this kind of a statement, we take it seriously that this is really what we stand for. I wonder how much, however, when we put these questions to 14-year-olds, kids who are still learning how to shave or adjusting to, to new body shapes, how important and serious they take these questions. We use phrases like, suffer all, even death. Now, from my perspective, these questions should be taken no less serious than the same question we ask a few years later in their life when we say, until death do you part at the marriage ceremony. It's that kind of a serious nature of our question. We should be saying, no matter what happens in my life, I will confess the faith and the word of God as taught 
in the Luther small catechism, as taught in our Lutheran faith. It's almost as if you can see a young 15-year-old holding their catechism high and saying, unless you pry this catechism from my cold, dead body, kind of a statement. That's the intent. I'm not sure that's always how it works out. I can imagine that almost all of us, if not all of us, know of somebody who made this pledge, whether you're a 14 or 15-year-old or as an adult, who for whatever reason have not lived up to the pledge and the promise they made, the vow they made. Maybe it's because they met somebody who went to a different church, and, and so to honor that new part of my life, I will follow that. Or maybe it's because the bowling league has now opened up a Sunday morning slot, and so we now have to bowl on Sunday mornings. Perhaps it's because, well, the soccer team plays a tournament, and I can't miss those games or my volleyball, or my dance recital, or whatever else gets in the way. Or it might be that the pastor's sermons are just boring. Now that's never it, but it's... It, or that the church is too cold. Or the communion wine isn't the way I like the taste of it. Or the hymnals are too boring. Or whatever reason we give, there are so many individuals who are serious the moment they take that vow, but as time goes on... Life interferes with that pledge of suffer all, even death. Are you willing to suffer all things and more to maintain the vows you took at your confirmation, at your reception of membership? Everything becomes secondary. That's what the gospel said. I have come not to bring peace, but to separate a father from his son, a mother from a daughter. I will be first in your life, and if there's anything, including your beloved family, that gets in the way of this, your family becomes second. How many of us are willing to take that pledge? That's hard. In fact, that's, um, if I ask you to give up your wife and child to became, remain Lutheran, that's asking a lot. To forsake your husband so you can stay Lutheran. That's asking a lot. How many of us can do that? To suffer all then fall away from our confession of our Lutheran faith? The answer is not many. There was one a guy by the name of Robert Barnes. How many of you remember Robert Barnes? Good, this is going to be a great time. You see, on this, the Sunday that's closest to October 31st, the church often recognizes it as Reformation Sunday. That's why we kept the red pyramids. That's why we have the Reformation banner up. We recognize and remember those events that took place 500 years ago. Those events that took place in Germany and, and in the Confession of Faith where Martin Luther and the other Reformers stood up to the, to the vile nature of the Roman Empire and, and tried to correct the abuses of the church at that time and their false theology. On Reformation Sunday, remember great names like Luther. Maybe some of you have heard of Melanchthon or Chemnitz. But there's one that's often forgotten which I think is just as important, a guy by the name of Robert Barnes. Who was Robert Barnes? Well, let me read for you what Martin Luther said about this Robert Barnes. This Dr. Robert Barnes we certainly knew, and it is a particular joy for me to hear that our good, pious dinner guest and house guest has been so graciously called by God to pour out his blood and to become a holy martyr for the sake of his dear son. Thanks, praise, and glory be to the Father and our Lord, dear Jesus Christ, who again, as at the beginning, has granted us to see the time in which his Christians, before our eyes and from our eyes and from beside us, are carried off to become martyrs, to become saints. Now, since this holy martyr, St. Robert Barnes, heard at the time that his king, Henry VIII of England, was opposed to the Pope, he came back to England with the hope of planting the gospel in the homeland, finally brought it about, and it began. 
And then Luther says, to cut a long story short, Henry of England was pleased with him as long as he got his way. That was until he came to us in Wittenberg. Who was Robert Barnes? Robert Barnes was the first English-speaking Lutheran. He was a scholar and a theologian. He loved to talk theology and discuss his things. He was from England, and he would gather with his other English theologians at the time. This was a, a crazy mixed-up time under Henry VIII. How many remember that song, Eight Wives He Had, and He Cut Off Their Heads and all those things? He was a Christian teacher at that time. He was also an Augustinian monk, the same kind of monk that Luther was. Luther was in Germany. Barnes was in England. And after preaching uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins and free grace through the blood of the Lamb, the, the English king didn't like this. He hadn't quite split off from, from the Church of Rome yet. He threw him in prison for two years. And after two years of being in prison, Barnes was released and he went back to Germany or went to Germany for the very first time so he could study under Martin Luther. And in 1530, Robert Barnes found himself in Wittenberg studying with Luther and Chemnitz or in, and Melanchthon and learning and growing in his faith. And after about a year, by this time, Henry VIII, back in England, had separated himself from the Roman Catholic Church. Now, if you remember your history, Henry VIII left the Catholic Church not because of their false theology, but because he wanted to divorce his wife, Catherine of Aragon, he wanted an annulment, and the Catholic Church wouldn't give him the annulment. So he said, I got a plan. I'll just make a new church, and I'll annul myself. Now, he still believed in the same doctrine and the theology that the Catholic Church had before, but instead of the church being headed by the Pope, it was headed by me. And I could divorce my wife and then eventually go on and marry seven more and kill half of them, which is what he did. So when Barnes heard that this was happening in his home country of England, while he was safe in Germany, he went back to England to bring the gospel, the forgiveness of sins through the blood of Christ, not by good works, but by saved by grace through faith alone, to England. And there he ran into opposition. There he found himself in opposition to those who would teach the truth of the gospel. And there, Robert Barnes, after preaching the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus, the same thing that was being preached by Luther in Germany, was captured, put in prison, and eventually, along with two of his companions, tied to a stake, surrounded by bundles of reeds, and burned alive. On July 30th, 1540, he suffered all, even death rather than deny the faith that he confessed in Jesus Christ. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that Robert Barnes never took confirmation vows or uh, reaffirmation of faith vows like we do. Those customs didn't exist back then. But for him, the gospel of forgiveness of sins by Jesus Christ was not something that could be compromised. His martyrdom didn't come because he was a Christian. His martyrdom came because he was a faithful, Bible-believing, Lutheran Christian. And therefore, he suffered all, including death. Robert had the confidence that comes from the pure, unadulterated truth as the Scriptures teach. He would risk his own life rather than compromise one syllable of the forgiveness of sins that God gives the assurance of life everlasting for all who believe in him. He willingly endured all things, loss of freedom, reputation, occupation, property, and life. Jesus warns us in our gospel from Matthew 10, whoever loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. You might add, whoever loves his king more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. There's nothing that we can love more than Jesus. 
Nothing is more worthy of our time or our effort, our devotion, than hearing the word of God, receiving his blessed body and blood in the sacrament. There's nothing more important on our schedule than spending time with our Lord Jesus Christ in his word and devotion and family time around the family altar. There's nothing more important in your life than your confession of faith. That's what God calls us to. Being gathered around to hear his word and receive his sacrament is the core of everything that we do and all that we are. God demands you take up your cross and follow me. But you see, there's a problem. No one can do it. Robert Barnes couldn't. Martin Luther couldn't. Pastor Ilian can, but the rest of us have trouble with that. No one can do it. No one can sacrifice everything. No one can be perfect and always living the way we're demanded to live. No one can come to Jesus on our own. We can't do it. In fact, God knew that. And Jesus, when he wrote these words from Matthew 10, he used a phrase three different times. He said, I have come. I have come. I have come. Now, what he didn't say is, you came to me. Now, that's a significant difference. We don't come to God because we are unworthy and unable. Our sinful human nature does not allow us to do what we need to do to receive the grace of God. So Jesus said, I have come to you. I come to you as freely as you are to be who you are. I have come to you. I've come to you that you might know who I am. And if this means sometimes you have to set aside your family against me, you choose me. And when you fail, I'm still coming to you. Jesus comes to us no question of whether we're worthy or we deserve it or we've earned it or we've somehow merited his grace. He comes to us in our failure. In fact, that's what he said a few chapters earlier in Matthew's gospel. When he said, I came, I came not to call the righteous, but the, yeah. And if you think you're righteous, if you're good enough, if you deserve this, then he didn't come for you. He came for us weak, lowly, poor, broken people. He came for all of us in his gospel If we want to be in the same church as Robert Burns, by the way, that's not Luther's church. It's Christ's church. It's the church of Christ and Jesus Christ. Then we've got to come as sinners, broken and needy, not as righteous and holy and perfect and good, but as people who are crying out, Lord, have mercy on me. I am a miserable sinner. And Jesus says, I come for you come for you. None of us are worthy for this. But Jesus doesn't call the worthy. He calls the unworthy. In his church, there is only grace, not worthiness. There's only mercy and not merit. There's only forgiveness and not fairness. Jesus promises, whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That doesn't make any sense at all. In fact, it's the opposite of common sense. If you find your life in yourself, if you're living for yourself, then Jesus says you're as good as dead. If you're doing what feels comfortable and pleasurable and easy because that's the life you've chosen, then you've already lost your life. But if you're willing to lay down your life and do the hard thing, make the difficult choices, Follow the path that few will follow. If that means separating a father from a son, a mother from a daughter, in-laws from ex-outlaws, then you will find life if it means choosing me over these things. The more we strive to live for ourselves, the more we die. The more we open ourselves up to even suffer and death, We have life. It begs the question, why would anyone leave a comfortable job, 
a favorite place in the kingdom to risk it all. Why would Robert Burns, who was in the heart of the Reformation, literally changing history under the tutelage of Martin Luther, why would he leave Wittenberg and go back to England? Because there were people there who didn't know the gospel. There are people there who still believed that they weren't saved because they weren't good enough, because they didn't do enough. And so he wanted to bring the assurance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why would anyone care one bit about Luther's confessions? Not because they're Luther's, but because they're the scriptures. Because they were saved by grace through faith, and it is not of ourselves, it is a free gift of God. None of us, not Luther or Barnes or Melanchthon or even Pastor Ilian, is worthy of boasting. It is God's free gift. And by that we have life. The very essence of the scriptures is what is taught in our small catechism, a large catechism, in the Augsburg Confession, in our Lutheran faith. And because of that, we can rest at ease. When we lay down our heads at night, we don't have to be worried about whether we're going to go to heaven when we die because today was a tough day. I screwed up a lot. I made some mistakes that I probably shouldn't have made. We don't have to worry about whether I have to earn my way back into God's graces. When we fall asleep at night, we can sleep at ease because our salvation is not dependent upon us. It was given to us as a free gift of God on the cross, and that gives us assurance and comfort and peace to rest with Him. You are His, and He is yours. All of that depends 100% on Christ and Him alone. Now today also is Elder Mel Sunday. And Elder Mel Sunday is an organization of women who have never been shy about their Lutheran identity and what that means. They are not just a women's organization. They are not just a missionary organization. They are a Lutheran women's mission organization and they love their Lutheran identity not because somehow that makes them special or because they all look good in purple. They do, by the way. But because by adding Lutheran, we identify the fact that there is nothing in us worthy of salvation. It is all about Christ and we get to share that good news of Jesus Christ. And everything the organization of Elder Mel does is not to promote ourselves, but to do the work that God has given us so that others may have the same confidence, peace, joy, comfort, assurance that we have in Christ Jesus. They proudly know that we are saved by faith. That is the work that God has given, the work of the Elder Mel to do. And they carry it on in humility, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, this is the faith that those of us in confirmation pledged our vows to. This is what it means that we would suffer all rather than depart from it. That we are saved by grace through faith in Christ. It is not of ourselves. This is what Robert Barnes died to confess. This is why he went to the flames rather than give up the truth of the gospel. His death is ours. His death is life. Jesus' pure, complete, sufficient sacrifice for our sins is what we live for. It is in that suffering and death that we find life. So God calls us in the gospel today to lose your life so that you may find it. To endure all things, even death, rather than to fall away from the truth of the gospel that is yours in Christ Jesus. Today, today we remember the work of those Reformation heroes. Today, we learned about another one named Robert Barnes. Today, we celebrate the work that goes on, continuing in our midst, through the work of the Lutheran Women's Missionary. The devil is trying to not prevent me from saying it, I'm sure. The LWML, that's much easier. <laughs> and today, we get to join our vows, our pledges, our lives with theirs, dying for Christ that we may live in Him. Amen. May the peace which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Now, having heard the word of God, let us together make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, God of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came from out of heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again from the dead, scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. And he will come to God. whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for all people according to their various circumstances. O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, strengthen the church here and wherever it gathers around your word and celebrates the blessed sacraments. Grant confident faith to clergy and lay, laity, pastors and congregations and missionaries in distant lands, elders in the faith and newly baptized alike. Help us to put all our trust in your protection and power. Lord, in your mercy, strong creator, wherever people call out to you as the earth gives way, mountains move into the heart of the sea and mountains tremble. Hear their cries and keep them safe. Awaken courage and wisdom in those who search and rescue, those who provide physical and spiritual counsel, and those who offer long-term support of body and life for the work of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League to assist each woman in the LCMS in affirming her relationship with the triune God so that she's enabled to use her gifts in ministry to the people of the world and to support global missions through the gathering of mites and providing mission grants. Lord, in your mercy. O Holy Spirit, when nations rage and kingdoms totter, use the earthly powers that we move the nations and their leaders to seek ways towards peace with their neighbor and stability within their borders. You who make wars cease to the ends of the earth, provide courage and compassion to all the work for peace and the protection as they deploy it abroad and all who maintain concord and order within their communities. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, stream joy and gladness to those who wait for the dawning of a new day who's dealing with long-term illness, unemployment, discrimination, unjust imprisonment, strife in their families, and loss of loved ones. Assure them that you are with them, even now as a very present help in trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, worthy to be exalted among the nations, into your mighty hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Hear our prayer for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Or lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, especially for the gift of your Son. He entered human history as one of us, was obedient to death, turned away your righteous wrath by taking on himself the punishment due us, and on the third day rose, leading the way to eternal life for all who trust in him for salvation. With him by our side, we need not fear the foe. Blessed Lord, you are the Lord of hosts, creator of all. For in you, your foresight and compassion, you promise to send your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to come and bear our sins and to be our Savior. With your Holy Spirit, gift of faith, 
we rely on your presence always and rejoice to receive your Son as he comes in this blessed sacrament. Strengthen us thereby that we may continue confident in faith, fearing not world, Satan, or sinful flesh. Grant us the assurance that you are both with us and for each day so that we may freely serve you until we see you face to face in eternity. To you alone be all glory and honor, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit are one God now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given to, to drink, he said, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament of my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of our Lord. Okay, and take and eat the body of Christ for you. Bless the body of the Lord for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink. And now may the true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Participation. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you. Depart in peace. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Amanda, the body of Christ for you. This is the body of Christ for you. Take and eat the body of Christ, Kelsey. This is the body of Christ for you, Ethan. The body of Christ for you, Brian, for the forgiveness of sins. Lee, this is the true body of Christ for you. Take and eat. Lance, the body of Christ given to you. Courtney, this is the very body of Christ for you. Christy, the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. Kim, this is Christ's true body for you. Lois, the body of Christ for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Chuck, this is Christ's body for you. Linda, the body of Christ for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Jackie, true Christ's body for you. This is the body of Christ for you, Carly. Dylan, this is the Christ's true body given to you for the forgiveness of sins. Denise, the body of Christ given to you for the forgiveness of sins. Linda, this is the body of Christ for you. Keith, take and eat the true body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of all your sins.
this for the forgiveness of sins. Pam, this is Christ's body for you for the forgiveness of sins. Pete, the body of our Lord for you. Mary, this is the Christ, the true body given to you. Jean, take and eat the body of Christ given to you for the forgiveness of sins. This is the true body for the Lord bless you and keep you. Take and eat the true body. Take the body of Christ given to you for the forgiveness of sins. Yeah, no, he's, he'll come over here. He'll come over here. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ for you. Let me switch sides. Take and eat, Dave, the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. Mary, take and eat. This is Christ's body. This is the true body of Christ given to you for the forgiveness of sins. This is the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the body of Christ for you, Ryan. Catherine, this is the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. Brett, the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. John, take and eat. Kelsey, this is the body of Christ for you. Barb, the true body of Christ given to you. Dusty, this is the body of Christ for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Craig, the true body of Christ for you. Cheryl, take and eat the body of Christ for you. Take and Darlene, the true body of Christ. Martin, the true body of our Lord for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is the true body of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Take and eat the body of our Lord for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This is the body of Christ. Joyce, take and eat the body of Christ for you. Myron, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Connie, take and eat the body. Take and eat the true body of Christ given to you. Take and eat the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is the body of our Lord for you. Velma, take and eat the body of Christ. Kathy, the true body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. Pastor, take and eat the body of Christ given to you. Kenzie, take and eat the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. Che Young, take and eat. This is the true body of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. Aaron, the body of Christ for you for the forgiveness of sins. Jen, take and eat the body of Christ for you. Emily, the body of Christ given to you for the forgiveness of sins. stand. Let us pray. Thanks and praise to you, Heavenly Father, for this sacrament you have again assured us that we are freed from the wrath due to our sins and freed to serve you with joy. Help us to trust firmly in your forgiveness and guidance each day until faith turns to sight. For the sake of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. The blessings of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Who's, who's
who's speaking? Who's speaking at your church? Who? Who you are? Okay, I didn't, I wasn't sure who. Okay, you are. Okay, thank you. I ever alone, waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. I have joined you, join forever. Go, my children, with my blessing. You are my own. Go my children, sins forgiven, at peace and pure. Hear you learn how much I love you, what I can cure. Hear you heard my dear son's story, hear you touched him, saw his glory. Go, my children, sins forgiven, at peace and pure. Go, my children, fed and nourished, closer. <laughs> Grow in love and love by serving joyful and free hear my spirit's power filled you hear his tender comfort stilled you go my children fed and nourished joyful and free I, the Lord, will bless and keep you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will smile upon you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will be your Father, Savior, Comforter, and brother, go, my children, I will keep you and give you peace. Good morning. Welcome all this morning. A uh, couple of announcements this morning. The first thing I want to share with you is uh, throughout this whole period of COVID for the last six or eight months, we've kind of put the activities of the church on a pause mode, but we're time to get started again. And that means this year we are in our second year of building on the foundation of faith. If you remember last year, we, we talked about that. This year, uh, we're building on the foundation of faith, and we got four areas of emphasis. One would be personal witness, which we we're doing through our Bible study on Sunday mornings. And the second area is service. Um, and then we've got the stewardship and fellowship. Now, stewardship and fellowship, we may still have to kind of wait and see how things turn out. But we're going to start emphasizing service. And when we talk about service, we're going to talk about service to the congregation. Uh, we did service as an emphasis a few years ago, uh, more in the community, but service in the congregation. So I'm going to lay before you a challenge. And I would pray that every single one of you would take this seriously. The challenge that I'm going to put before you is that each and every family and individual Pick an area that you would like to serve in the congregation. It may be something as simple as greeters, ushers. You can read the lessons. Uh, you can help with the, the technology and advancing the slides and doing the recording of the services. It may be that you help uh, tear down and set up for funerals and luncheons or, or uh, different things. It may be snow removal when we get to that point. But uh, what I want to do is I want to say that everyone in our congregation can say, this is an area where I help up my church. Um, and I think that's a, that's a minimum that we can all ask. Because we all, this is our congregation, this is our church, and all of us need to make it together. So over the next several months, we're going to be emphasizing, what is your area? Where are you and your family serving Emmanuel Lutheran Church? Now we're going to give you ways to help you to do that. 
Uh, today we're kind of rolling out the project, but next week I want you to bring your electronic devices with you to church. Now this is scary. <laughs> bring your phones or your laptop, or not laptops, or laptops, I suppose, or your tablets. Because next week we are now using an online sign-up uh, software that allows you to sign up to say, I can go online and sign up to be an, an usher or a greeter or a reader. Um, and we're going to teach you next week on how to log into that system. Um, and you all have to have your own personal password. And so John next week is going to take a few minutes after the service and say how we can get everyone logged in. So bring your devices with you. We'll do it right after the service. We'll all get logged into the, it's called Sign Up Genius. You'll all get your stuff. If you don't have an electronic device, if you don't know how to do that, we will have laptops set out in the fellowship area. We'll help you do that after service. That's next week. The week after that, in two weeks, we're actually going to tell you how you can begin signing up for the different parts. So next week, we're just going to get you logged in with a, with a username and a password. The following week, we're going to say, how do you use Sign Up Genius? And our goal is that every family and every member of the congregation has some area that you can volunteer, you can serve in, uh, and help in the congregation. All in favor, say aye. aye. I didn't hear all of you. I said all in favor, say aye. Aye. There you go, there you go. <laughs> uh, we look forward to doing that. Now that is kind of the, the business part, but we also want to hear about what God's doing, and, and Jen's going to share with us a little bit about what's going on with LWML. Now I can say that. Lutheran Women's Missionary, blah, 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 blah. Good morning. Um, so I talked a little bit during the children's sermon about the LWML and a few of the mission ministries that we do, but what I want to let you know is, is um, that here at Emmanuel, our Dorcas group, I feel it's about um, women building relationships with each other, growing stronger in the church, and helping others, be that locally here in Cedar Falls in Iowa or even across the world. Um, these mite boxes that I gave the kids and that we uh, Dorcas ladies use, um, they do amazing things. Um, so a lot of you might have been handed a bookmark when you walked in, um, and these have our national uh, ministry grants on here. So like our pennies and nickels and dimes, those go towards uh, huge things across the world, like um, they, they fund ministries like uh, a mission uh, for at-risk young women in Africa. And that's a $100,000 grant. Um, there's also a $50,000 grant on here to go to a multi-purpose building in uh, Sri Lanka. Um, and there's, there's just, there's 21 of them, so many more. And these national mission grants total $2 million, and $2,100. Um, but here in Iowa, we have our Iowa district mission grants as well, up on the screens there. Um, so just here in Iowa, we are, our missions are for things like student aid for Concordia students, the Orphan Grain Train in Clemens, Iowa, and the Mission Central in Mapleton. And there's many more, okay. So there's a huge mite box at the back of the church. So if you have any loose change um, or cash, you can go ahead and drop it in and just know that your money will be doing some great things. And I feel here as a member of LWML, I have a purpose, um, and God is using me to grow his kingdom. I'm kingdom fruit. <laughs> and I love all of the women here at Emmanuel that I've grown to um, know through Dorcas, and it's just a lot of fun, really. So I would encourage all of you ladies to join or come to our next meeting next month. Sharon Limbeck will be join, uh, leading a Bible study. And we'll also be working on Christmas cards to send to our shut-ins and our military members. So you're, all, all of you ladies are welcome. Thank you. So would all of our LWML ladies please stand so we can kind of see who you are, if you're an LWML. Now this organization, um, now let me phrase it differently. Will all the women please stand? Because by being a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, you are de facto a member of the LWML. So uh, this is the potential we have. So I just think we can take this and we can do a lot of things. Thank you very much. Have a blessed morning.